Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here, lady. We're Karen's mistake regular customers as employees, and the stories are freaking wild and super duper entertaining. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And as always, you can send or link your stories to this email right here. We're diving in. So I work at a place where the uniform is a stunningly fashionable red polo with black trim. And this occurred at a store where they wear slimming black with lime green trim. So I'm on my way home from work one winter day and decide to stop by this grocery store. As it's winter, I'm wearing my winter jacket, which is a very vibrant purple. Because it's kind of warm out, my jacket's unzipped to reveal my work shirt. I also have my headphones in, a headband on, and a bright blue shoulder bag. Clearly a customer. As I'm kneeling down in front of some drinks, pondering which one I should buy, this woman starts getting up in my business. I shuffle over thinking maybe she wants to look at the drinks as well and start putting a couple into my basket. And then I hear the dreaded, excuse me. And with that, I glance around, hoping she's going at someone else, but to no avail. I look up, pulling out one earbud and saying, uh, I'm sorry, am I in your way? The woman says to me, where's the coconut oil? And at that, I just blink and shrug, uh, I don't know, I'm sorry over there maybe, and then points over towards the baking aisle. The woman then says, what do you mean you don't know? Are you that incompetent at your job? Hearing her say that, now I'm pissed. I clearly don't work there, and for the record, I'm very competent at my job. My job that's not at this grocery store. I say to her, lady, I don't work here, so go find someone else. To which she says, you're wearing a uniform. You have to help me. I tell her, yeah, I'm wearing a uniform for the store down the street, not here. I don't have to help you with anything. Now leave me alone. I then start to walk off, but she screams at me as I'm leaving, saying, I'm going to report you to the manager. To which my mature self tells her, go for it. I then finish up my shopping, and I'm using the self-checkouts, because between work and this Karen, I've had more social interaction than I can handle. And that's when I hear, there she is, that's her. I then look around to see who's screaming, and lo and behold, there's Karen, and she's dragging this poor sap along with her over to me, saying, she won't help me. I want her fired. To which the person says, ma'am, she doesn't work here. The Karen says, I don't care. I want her fired anyways. She's useless and rude. The manager says to her, ma'am, she doesn't work here. She works somewhere else. I literally don't have the authority to fire her. She replies, are you telling me that you're not even going to fire her even though I said she was rude? It's at this point, me and Buddy make eye contact and a moment of understanding passes. I then give him a small nod and he sighs and says, very well, miss. I'm afraid it's just not working out. I'm going to have to let you go. At that, I just nod solemnly and say, I understand, I'm going to be going then. And then gather my groceries and go to leave. And Karen has the biggest grin on her face. And that's the story of how I got fired from a store that I never worked at a single day in my life. Yeah, guys, so the manager was definitely in the wrong for this one. Like, the worst thing you can do as a manager or a supervisor is let a rude customer like that think they've won because... <laughs> You know what, that Karen is probably going to walk around with a false sense of power and she's going to try to make everyone's lives miserable. The correct response from that manager should have been, ma'am, stop harassing customers and get out of my store and never come back. And while we're on the topic of managers firing customers, guys, listen to this next one. So I recently got reminded of this one. At the time this happened, I was a 13 or 14 year old who tried to buy new jeans because her last one got accidentally ripped apart by an overjoyed puppy. So broke me, found this jean store with a big 50% off sign to look around. The store was very confusing. It wasn't very big and I couldn't for the life of me figure out where the women's section was. So socially awkward me decides to put on her big girl pants and ask somebody. I go to the counter and before I can say a thing, the guy behind the counter was furious with me. He says to me, hey, where have you been? We've been trying to reach you for hours. Why don't you answer your phone? Now this was followed by me just standing there looking dumbfounded and scared. I was a small shy girl at the time and the guy was tall and he spoke too loud for comfort. He then goes on with, no excuses, come with me right now. And little dumb scared me at the time, followed that guy. Mostly because my brain refuses to process what just happened. So we go to a hidden part of the store by a wall and I saw the women's section. Now my brain, remembering what I was here for, 
told my feet to just go that way and forget about the guy. And that's when the guy grabs me by the arm and forces me in a different direction. The guy's basically pulling me until we reach a little office. And by little, I mean it was cramped small. There was a desk, a lot of papers everywhere, and a man was sitting in an office chair. That's when the guy closes the door and none of us had any space to move. It was just me, him, and the boss. The guy greets the man and says, Mr. Boss, I found her. She was just wandering in. Mr. Boss man is now looking at me and he gives a speech about responsibility and how being on time is important if I worked here. While Mr. Boss was busy with his speech, the wheels in my brain begin to turn. I'm thinking, does he think I work here? But a boss should know his own employees, shouldn't he? I tried to muster enough courage to speak, but out came a small, I don't work here. It's at that point, Mr. Boss looks at me and then pulls out an application letter saying, Are you not Melanie? I then shook my head. He's then looking at the picture and my face over and over again. And that's when he says, Oh, that's not her. I then looked at the picture. It was a girl about my age, the same hair, same eye color, but different facial features. He then told me that today should have been her first day of work, but she never showed up. The guy then apologized and asked me why I haven't said anything, and that's when he dismissed me instantly. The front counter guy brought me to the front and outside the store. Basically, I was politely kicked out. I was dumbfounded again. Yeah, so with that encounter with those two, maybe it's a good thing that the real employee didn't show up, guys. Like, I only wish police were involved somehow, because that employee basically assaulted and then detained a minor in an office. Like, even if OP was the girl that was supposed to be working there, like, what the heck, dude? There should never be a reason for anyone to ever be dragged to the back office to get reprimanded. If I was OP's parents and she came home and told me that's what happened, boy guys, I'm going back to that store and I'm unleashing hell on those two. Those two are going to get fired so friggin' fast. And before that, I might even hand out karate chops, guys. I don't know. I was invited to my college roommate's girlfriend, Sarah's party. Now, Sarah was a theater and dance major, and this was in her predominantly white neighborhood and hometown. I'm part Mexican, and I look Mexican. It was a bit of a drive for me, about an hour and a half away, and on my way in, I give my friend a call saying, Hey Ken, I'm pretty close. Do you guys need anything from the store, like food or drinks or anything? At that, Ken tells me, No, we're good. Just get over here so we can start drinking. With that, I grab a bottle of wine and head over about 10 minutes after starting time. So as I arrive, I see my friends bringing in a sound system from his truck. So naturally, I grab a big speaker and walk into the backyard to help set up. As I'm walking in, I notice that it's only white people, which is totally fine. Just something I notice as I'm trying to find familiar faces. I set down the speaker on the deck in the backyard and I'm handed a beer and I'm going back out to help with any more equipment. It's at this point, Sarah's mom approaches me, and she looks just like her, and here we go. Sarah's mom basically says, Oh my god, where have you been? You're late. We've been waiting for you. Now my first impression of Sarah's mom is, Oh, this lady's hilarious. Like, I'm nobody in regards to this party. Maybe this is her eccentric way of welcoming guests. I also want to note that my friend setting up his sound system out of earshot. So basically, with a beer in my hand, I say, Yeah, uh, I hit a little bit of traffic along the way, but it wasn't too bad. I'm glad I made it. And your backyard's beautiful. The setup looks really nice. Sarah's mom looks concerned and a little bit upset at me and says, Well, did you bring the food? Everyone's starving. At that, I laugh and say, Well, I called Ken. He said you didn't need anything. I'll be happy to go back out and get whatever I need to get, though. Like, what do you need? Sarah's mom says, You're telling me that you didn't bring your taco cart? Are you gonna make the food in the kitchen? Hearing her say that, this somewhat strikes a nerve, like, I'm just trying to help. I'm also thinking, wow, this lady is really laying into me upon introduction. I respect that. A light racist joke before introduction, that's a bold move. I'm thinking, she's hilarious, I'll play along, let's throw some punches. So I say to her, geez, uh, my carts in the shop. Sarah's mom says, well, what are you going to do? Go back and get it. I tell her I'm sure I have some cousins close by that can bring their carts and maybe get some tacos going. Maybe get you some churros. Shoot, maybe we can even bring in some of those big hats. What do you think? I then sip my drink and laugh. 
Meanwhile, Sarah's mom is visibly upset and she's sticking to this entertaining scenario that we've created. She then says, this is so unprofessional, like you show up empty handed to this party and now you just stand there with a beer? How dare you? Why am I even paying you? I respond, yeah, how dare I? I then take another sip of the beer and laugh and say, uh, well I guess I should have bought my backup taco cart. I look at Sarah's mom, and I think she's still not ready to break character, and she looks even more upset. I think to myself, well this must be where Sarah gets her theater from. At this point, Sarah walks over. Finally, someone I know. She gives me a big hug, sees her mom's frustration, and says, Oh, was my mom telling you that the taco cart hasn't come yet? Hearing Sarah say this, Sarah's mom's jaw was about to hit the floor and she says, Oh my god, you're Ken's roommate? I'm so sorry. I just assumed, like, because you were carrying things in and with everything, oh, I'm just so embarrassed. I'm just cracking up at this point and Sarah's cracking up. I say to her, well, I'm a really terrible cook, so it's a good thing Sarah came along. I was ready to get the food for this party. In fact, hold on, I'll be right back. I return presenting the bottle of wine, and just to add a little bit of salt, I say, Sorry I'm so late, and I forgot the food. I hope I'm still welcome. If I'm not, I can just cut the grass and head out. Sarah's mom apologized again, and I assured her that I was not offended in the slightest, and helped to decide what to do about the food, and help call a few places. They ordered pizza at this point. It turns out the vendor's truck, Pedro's, broke down on the side of the freeway, and they weren't gonna make it. I can't just let a joke go, so at that point I throw in, Ugh, you guys were gonna go with Pedro's? Tia needs to straighten that boy out. He's always late to family fiestas. I got a few more jabs in throughout the night, and Sarah's mom played along, and she was actually really nice. There were no hard feelings. She was just under stress because the vendor didn't show up. My goodness guys, all I can say is I love the way Opie handled that first encounter with his friend's mom. Even though from his point of view, he had no idea she thought he was a taco cart owner. Kudos to Opie for having that sense of humor. And this person says, this is how Mexicans combat racism. We simply don't give a crap. LOL. So to set the scene, I had just finished work. Exhaustion was threatening to take hold of my body, and me fighting with every fiber of my being to stay conscious enough for the final push of making the drive home. I had just popped into the supermarket and picked up some cereal and trifle. And I know, it's an odd combination, but I hope future historians will struggle to find an explanation for it. I was walking towards my car, the light at the end of the tunnel glinting hopefully and signaling an end to my 12-hour workday. I opted to cut down a quick side street since outside of work I'm anti-social, and working in retail sucks the enthusiasm to deal with the general public. And then it happens, the Karen dragon appears. So as I sidestep a dog turd that a particularly lazy pet owner decided to leave, I then hear the two words that every brave retail knight dreads hearing, excuse me. Now unfortunately for me, this particular brand of crazy was unknown, even to me. The woman says to me, are you gonna pick up that dog crap? I then look down at myself and my cereal and trifle, and I'm thinking, yep, I was definitely not the designated crap shoveler that she presumed me to be. I say to her, uh, what? Mystified as to how a random stranger that she just accosted in the street should be responsible for cleaning up a random turd. She then repeats herself and says, are you gonna pick up that dog crap? I ask her, why would I? And she says, is this what my tax goes towards? Lazy workers who don't keep the streets clean? I'm gonna report you. And here's where I remember something that I read on another post, and it was perfect. I say to her, are you okay? Do you need me to call someone to come pick you up? The Karen replies, yes, I'm fine. Her face was screwing up in confusion, and she says, why are you gonna call someone? I say to her, because you must either be senile, have dementia, or just be really stupid if you think a random person who just happens to be walking in the opposite direction is there to pick up crap off the pavement because you told them to. The woman says, there's no need to be so rude, basically coiling up to deliver the Karen strike. I say to her, you're right, I'm sorry, I'll just call the care home to have someone swing by in a van and meet you. The woman says, I don't live in a care home, how dare you be so rude to me? I respond, how dare you be so rude to me? It's not my job to pick up dog crap. It's at this point I just step around her and continued walking. 
Her tirade ceased momentarily as she just stared at my back in odd confusion. Now apparently this Karen was not used to being ignored and not having instant vindication for her Karening. And that short-circuited her brain. The hamster in her head had apparently shrugged and decided to bail, leaving the hamster wheel spinning idly. She then flaps her mouth open and shut as I threw her a cheeky wave and went on my way. So that was my harrowing ordeal, my Karen in the wild. One that brings a smile to my face. Guys, I love this post, mostly because OP stood up to that rude woman. Guys, I hope more and more people can answer Karens like this because maybe, just maybe she'll think twice about screaming at a random stranger next time. So I work at a crematorium. Now this crematorium has memorial gardens and my job is to sell the sites, administration, and customer service. I like to think I'm pretty good at it. The figures definitely show an upward trend since I started four months ago. But this crematorium also has a cemetery out front. The division is the car park, where there's signs giving the name of the cemetery. People constantly call or walk in asking about sites or maintenance or help finding grandma in the cemetery. All I can do is explain that the council controls the cemetery site, the maintenance, burials, memorials, and records, and give them their office number to call. If they're nice and the inquiry's quick, I'll do it for them. Usually for the nice old ducks looking to visit a friend they haven't been to visit in years. But it's definitely difficult to gauge whether they're talking about the memorial gardens or the cemetery. Especially over the phone, since trying to figure out where to start asking questions is hard for me because I'm autistic. I can only desperately hope that I don't seem rude. Now, there's one particular middle-aged woman who doesn't seem to get it, despite multiple explanations. The lady wants to put her mom's ashes with her father's, but since I don't work for the cemetery, I can't help her. I've directed her to the council a few times, but last week, she comes back in to ask why we hadn't put her mom's ashes where it's supposed to be. Again, I try to explain, but she starts going off about my tone, about my lack of professionalism, about how disrespectful I'm being. So the lady sneering and trying to interrupt my trying to be helpful explanation says, How old are you? At that I respond, uh, I'm, I'm sorry? She says, I asked, how old are you? I tell her, oh, I'm 28. She then says, you're too young for this job. I bet you haven't even lost anyone in your life. No wonder you're so damn disrespectful and useless. Me, getting angry and loud since it's so fresh, say, well, I actually lost my father six months ago. His memorial happens to be here in the gardens. The gardens that I work in, not the cemetery. I don't work for the cemetery. At that, the woman says, I can't believe you're talking to me like this. Where's your manager? If you people don't do your jobs, I'm gonna call the police. You'd better just do your effing job or I'm gonna take legal action. It's been weeks. You don't know how to treat people. It's disgusting how you're holding my mom's ashes hostage. I'm calling the police. I say to her, look, I completely understand. It's horrible that you haven't been able to lay her ashes to rest and say goodbye, but I really can't help you. And my manager's off site at the moment, but I'll give you his number. The woman says to me, I must say, your tone has been completely disrespectful. You don't even sound like you give a damn. Me, writing my manager's direct number on a business card say, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I have autism, so that's probably why. I truly don't mean to sound... She then interrupts me loudly and says, Autism? So you're too stupid to do your job? She then snatches the paper out of my shaking hand before storming out the door. And my anxiety levels were absolutely through the roof. We received several emails and calls of complaint from three different members of family so far. I'm guessing she's telling them to all contact us specifically. Yeah guys, I think I would have gotten her to call the cops at that point so I could turn it around on Karen and have her charged for like harassment or something. Like, Opie tried to handle that Karen in the most professional manner and she was cursed at, insulted, and disrespected guys. And this person says, never tell confrontational people that you're neurodivergent. It's just fuel on the fire that's their lack of personality. So the house next door to me has been converted into luxury apartments, all of which are let via Airbnb. Access is via a key code on the door, which often causes problems for people who haven't bothered to read their confirmation emails and assumes that a human being will be there to greet them. On more than a few occasions, I've had to explain this to bewildered tourists, and they're usually very polite. And on one occasion, I even gave a traveler a hotspot so he could retrieve the code from the app. Yesterday evening, I was leaving my house, and the second I get out the door, I was verbally berated by a Karen, standing outside the house next door. 
with what I can only assume was her poor, unfortunate husband. She was in her mid-50s, I'd say, and although she wasn't dressed like a typical Karen, she certainly had the demeanor. The woman exclaims, Finally! We've been waiting here for over an hour. I've been ringing the doorbell and nobody's answering. At that I say, oh, you're trying to get into the Airbnb? The Karen says, well, obviously. Why else would I be standing here? I need you to let me inside immediately. This is not good enough. I tell her, oh, I can't do that. You need to enter the code on the keypad. She says, what code? I don't have time. Just let me in. I say to her, I don't have anything to do with the Airbnb. I just live next door to it. You need to enter the code on the keypad. The woman then says, what nonsense. You're just being lazy. Her husband then blurts out, Sylvia. I then lose my patience and say, uh, look lady, I don't work for the Airbnb. There's nobody here to let you inside. You're gonna need to get the code they sent you and enter it in the keypad. Bye bye. I then start to walk away as fast as I can as I see my bus approaching. And the woman says, get back here young man, I pay your wages, I'll have you fired for this. That was the last thing I heard. And as I was telling my friends this tale in the pub, I wondered if they were still standing there hours later. But when I got home, they were nowhere to be seen, I guess I should expect a write up from my non-existent manager in the morning. And that my friends brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here lady. Guys I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that like button, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash malicious compliance, where OP's neighbor calls 911 on him for littering, and she freaking regrets it, guys. Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.